the homily for the sixth Sunday after Pentecost. I have compassion on the multitude. My dear friends, the words that our Lord uttered prove to us how loving his heart is to the sons of men. Our Lord, in his great power, made miracles to alleviate our sorrows and needs, but most importantly, he made miracles to save our souls. Now, these same words we may certainly put on the lips of our Blessed Mother, the Virgin Mary. For if there is one thing that one can certainly find in the heart of every normal mother is compassion towards her children. The heart of the Virgin Mary is all compassion and mercy towards us. Yesterday we celebrated a feast day that marks one of the greatest acts of compassion and of power which the Virgin Mary has ever made for mankind. We celebrated the feast day of the Blessed Virgin Mary of Mount Carmel. And so today I would like to speak about her and about the brown scapular, so that we may learn the story behind it and appreciate its significance. And for that I will tell you first the, the story of the Order of the Carmelites. Now in the church you have what you call religious orders, and a good way to understand how they work is this. Say, for example, in your country, in America, you have the armed forces. They all work for the same purpose, defending the country. But you have different branches. Each one, each branch, has certain specialties. It has a certain story behind it. Its own heroes. In the same way, in the church militant, you have several different bodies, all of them working to save souls, and all of them working to glorify God, but each one has a different specialty. Each one defends the church in a different realm, in a different manner. Each one has its own general, its own founder, its own method of operations. You have the Jesuits, the Franciscans, the Carmelites. But the Carmelite order has something very special about it. All the religious orders of the church were established in the New Testament, meaning they were established after Christ came. The Franciscans were found by, founded by St. Francis in the 13th century. The Dominicans were established by St. Dominic around the same time. The Benedictines in the 4th or the 5th century. But the Carmelite order began in the Old Testament. It began even before Christ. The Carmelite order was founded by the prophet Elias, who lived several centuries before our Lord. Let me tell you how this happened. The Carmelite tradition tells us that the Holy Land had been suffering for three years of a great drought, no water, all over the land. This had happened in punishment for the sins of idolatry committed by the people and particularly by the king. The prophet Elias had warned them that this was going to happen. After three years, to summarize the story, the prophet Elias prayed that this drought would come to an end. And finally, he received the answer to his prayers. And this is how his prayers were answered. Standing on top of Mount Carmel, he saw a cloud as small as the hand of a man, scripture tells us. But yet he knew that from this little humble cloud, would come a great rain that would soak the whole of the land. Now this cloud, tradition tells us, was a figure of the future mother of the Messiah, who would have a very humble, a very hidden origin, but would end up bringing grace to the whole world. The prophet then made his abode here in the mountain where he had seen this prophecy. This mountain, this promontory rather, is located in the coast of the Holy Land and is called Mount Carmel. It is in this mountain then that he began to have disciples, and these disciples were called the sons of the prophets. And they all endured in the mountain for centuries, passing these traditions from generation to generation, until the time came where our Lord Jesus Christ came to this earth. Now, on the reading of the breviary, the book that the priests pray every day, 
The reading for July the 16th tells us that when the Holy Ghost descended upon the apostles on the day of Pentecost, when they began their preaching, these monks from the Old Testament, the monks that had been founded by the prophet Elias, heard the preaching of the gospel and accepted it, and from that moment on they started having a special devotion to the Virgin Mary, who was still alive at the time. It was on account of this special devotion that they had for the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ that they were called by the people the brothers of the Virgin Mary of Mount Carmel. So if we take the origins of the order, as I have told you, this, the Carmelite order, would be the oldest order that there has ever been in the Catholic Church. This is a point that has been debated in the past, but to know how the Church thinks about it is suffice it to say that the Church has granted to the Carmelites a Mass and a Divine Office for St. Elias as the founder of their order. Now this is very, very remarkable because remember the prophet Elias, as the Bible tells us, is not dead, he hasn't died. He's waiting for the end of the world to come back. So it's very remarkable because St. Elias is the only living person in whose honor the church allows to say a mass and the divine office. Now, when did the scapular, the brown scapular, came to be? In order to tell you, I need to continue the story. The order that I was talking about only existed in Palestine, only existed around Mount Carmel. But then came the time of the Crusades. Christian knights were coming from Europe, then they were going back from the Holy Land into Europe. And in this way, some of the monks that were there in Palestine ended up coming into Europe and establishing in there the Order of the Carmelites. Now, it was at this time that a very holy young man from England was inspired by an apparition of the Virgin Mary and came to join this newfound order to become, eventually, its general. He became famous because before he had found the order, he had lived as a hermit in the woods, inside the stalk of a large tree. Hence his name, Simon Stock. So he became the general, and while he was a general, the order faced its greatest conflict. The Lateran Council had taken place recently, and in the ordinances of the council, one of the things that they decreed was that for the moment, the church would not admit any more religious orders than the ones established. And so they said, whoever is establishing a new order, let them join the ones that are already created. So here, a new, a great controversy was aroused. The Carmelites on the one side defended their order, their order as having been established a long time ago. Others attacked them and said, no, this is a new order, it's established recently. Rome was about to abolish the order altogether. St. Simon Stock, then the general, in great anguish, spent the night in prayer. Now the next morning he gathered all his monks, and filled with joy he told them what had happened to him. As he poured his afflicted soul at the feet of the Virgin Mary, reciting his favorite prayers, which say, Flower of Carmel, Vineyard in Bloom, Splendor of Heaven, Virgin our Queen, Singular and Mother Meek, Untouched by men, To the Carmelites give your privileges, O Star of the Sea. Now this is a beautiful song that rhymes in Latin, and we have the music for it too. So while he was praying this beautiful uh, poem, the Virgin Mary appeared to him among clouds and crowds of angels, dressed in the same habit that the Carmelites would wear from now on, and delivered to him what we now know as the brown scapular. And as she delivered the brown scapular to St. Simon Stock, she said to him, Receive, most beloved son, this, the scapular of your order, a sign of our brotherhood, and a privilege for you and for all the Carmelites. Whosoever dies wearing it shall not suffer eternal fire. It is health, salvation in danger, an alliance of peace, and an eternal pact. 
And so it was, my dear friends, that through the Carmelite order, the scapular was given to the world, a sign of the immense power that God has put in the hands of the Virgin Mary, a sign of the great, the immense, the immeasurable love that our Mother has for us in heaven. And so we must call her, if we wear the scapular, for her love, for her sake. Let us call her my mother. What a powerful force she displays here against the snares of the devil. Satan strives to lose souls, to bring them to hell, to damnation. And here comes the queen of heaven, fair as the moon, bright as the sun, terrible as an army set in battle array, and destroys and crushes the dragon, stealing thousands, if not millions of souls, through the grace of the brown scapular. What a mighty promise, the one that she gave us. How unbelievable it should seem to us that just by doing this small act, just by declaring our allegiance to the Virgin Mary, by wearing her robe, by declaring us to be her children, only by that, such a great promise is given to us as never to see the fires of hell. Who, my dear friends, will dare doubt her love? Who will dare doubt her loving care for us? I picture a soul lost, falling into the pits of hell, sliding down the precipice through the ashes and the first sparks of that eternal fire. I picture his arms and legs trying desperately to cling to something, to hold on to something, to stop their fall. I picture the hordes of wolves from hell ready to devour this poor sinner. Demons making ready to torture this soul for all eternity. And as the last moment comes, when finally the soul is about to be lost forever and to fall without remedy into that dark abyss from where there is no return, light is suddenly made, thunder from heaven casts away all evil, and right there from the very mouth of hell, the virgin queen of Mount Carmel rescues the soul, stretching out her hand and taking a hold of the poor sinner, through perhaps the rope of the rosary, the rope of the brown scapular. The demons cry in anger, but they are crushed by the power of this mother, whose peaceful countenance shows itself terrible to Satan as the power of a thousand armies against him, while the soul of the sinner is relieved by this sweet look of that mother that loves him so much that saved him only through the rosary and the brown scapular. So no, let us never doubt her love, and what is most important, let us never spend one day even without wearing the brown scapular. All persons who have reached the age of reason should be wearing it, and at all times. If you have never been enrolled by a traditional Catholic priest, make sure you reach out to be enrolled right away. For this is truly health, salvation in danger, an alliance of peace, and an eternal pact. As we finish this sermon, I, I want to make a few reminders of the brown scapular. The first one is, there are two privileges that those who wear it can gain. The first one is to be spared of the pains of hell, which we mentioned in the sermon. And this is gained by being enrolled in the brown scapular by a traditional Catholic priest, a valid priest, and... To, by wearing the scapular as is supposed to be worn upon one's shoulders, the one side of the scapular in our chest and the other side of the scapular in our back. It's supposed to be worn as a habit. If one doesn't wear it like that, one is not fulfilling what our Blessed Mother has requested. The other privilege is what is called the Sabbatine privilege, and that consists in the promise that our Blessed Mother has made, that she will relieve, she will uh, deliver from purgatory. Those who fulfill two different aspects. The first one is to keep chastity according to one's state. If one is married, to live according to the laws of marriage. If one is single or a priest or a religious, to live with the chastity that the state demands. And the other one is to pray the small office of the Virgin Mary. She said herself that if, for those who do not know how to read, they can abstain instead from meat on Wednesdays and Saturdays. 
Now, a priest, a confessor, is able to commute, to change these uh, obligations, or the, rather these uh, requests of our Blessed Mother for something else, but one needs to reach a confessor and ask for this to be changed by some other thing. It can be, again, abstinence, it can be the praying of the rosary, or something like that. So these are two privileges that we can gain, and I encourage all our listeners, particularly to make sure that all your relatives, friends, and yourself are enrolled in the brown scapular, that you have it all the time, and that you have brown scapulars to spare for those situations where you might want to give it to someone whose uh, brown scapular has been broken or lost.